My name is Kara Marie Morris, and I'm the host of the Words in Season podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode, where we are going to begin talking about the three sacrifices of Hebrews 13. The sacrifices that Jesus made, now we make, and we have the ability to make because of what God has empowered us with, with the sacrifice of Jesus. So as we're coming upon the Easter season, it's our privilege as Christians to remember the price that was paid, the blood that was shed, the sacrifice that was made on behalf of all those who would believe, whoever would believe in their heart and confess with their mouth so that this right relationship can be restored with the Father. So thank you for tuning in. Remember, you can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. But most importantly, remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus always has a word in season for you. So our first scripture, our foundational scripture is going to be found in Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and starting in verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is the same always, yesterday, today, and forever, and throughout all of the ages. So do not be carried about by different and varied and alien teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established and enabled and strengthened by the means of the grace of God's favor and spiritual blessing. And do not be devoted to rules about food and diet and ritualistic meals, which bring no spiritual benefit nor profit, profit to those who observe them. But we have an altar from whom those who serve and worship in the tabernacle have no right to eat. For when the blood of animals is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin, the victim's bodies were burned outside of the limits of the camp. Therefore, Jesus, our New Testament sacrifice for all, our sacrifice, Jesus also suffered and died outside the city's gate in order that he might purify and consecrate the people through the shedding of his own blood and set them apart as his holy people for God. So we have been set apart. We have been consecrated because of the blood of Jesus. As I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, I am recreated like it says in 2 Corinthians 5. We are recreated, a new creature that never existed. It's not even like there's a little bit of old Kara. The old Kara still lives here. That's why I have to renew my mind with the word of God. But my spirit man has been recreated, something new that never existed before. And that is because of the, the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice. Continuing to talk about the sacrifice of Jesus in Ephesians 2, it says, remember that you were at some time separated and living from Christ. So before you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, you were separated from God. Even if you didn't feel like you were separated, you were eternally separated because of the sin of Adam and Eve at the very beginning. And you lived apart from Christ and you were excluded from all part in him, utterly estranged and outlawed from all the rights as a nation and strangers who had no share in the sacred compacts of the messianic promise and with no knowledge or right of God's agreements and his covenants and you had no hope and that's exactly where we are that's where the world is today without Christ without hope we were without hope and without promise and you were in a world without God but now because of Jesus Christ you who were once so far away through and by and in by the blood of Christ, you have been brought near. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity, our harmony. And he has made us both Jew and Gentile, one body, and has broken down and destroyed and abolished the hostile and dividing wall between us. By abolishing in his own crucified flesh the enmity of the law with its decrees and ordinances which he annulled, that he may, might make from these two one new man. And that's who we are in Christ. One new man. He created a new man, a new type of man that would be different from anything else in the world. 
That's why whenever I or anyone who is a Christian tries to live like the world, that's why it's the worst place to be as a Christian. A Christian cannot fit into the world because we are created new. Just like it says that you cannot put new wine into an old wineskin or it will burst because we are something new. We are something regenerated. We are something bought with a price. That is why we have hope and that is why there is something different about us in the world. So now Jesus is our peace. And because of his own crucified flesh, he took these two and made one. And he designed to reconcile God, both Jew and Gentile, united in one single body by the means of the cross, and therefore killing the mutual enmity and bringing the few to end. And continuing in verse 18, it says, it is through him that we both, whether far off or near, have an introduction and access by the one Holy Spirit to the Father. And now we are able to approach him. We're able to approach the Father because of the sacrifice that Jesus made. There's no longer old Kara, but there's new Kara. There's new nature. And also we are no longer exiled from him. We're no longer exiles, migrants, or aliens excluded from the rights of citizens. But now you share in the citizenship of the saints, God's own people, consecrated and set apart for himself. And we belong to God's own household. And that is where we belong as Christians. We belong in the house of God. We belong in his presence. We belong fellowshipping with like believers. That's where we get this strength this energy to be able to keep going in what God has called us to do. And then in 1 Peter 3 and verse 18, it says, For Christ the Messiah died for sins once and for all, the righteous and for the unrighteous, for the just and for the unjust, for the innocent and for the guilty, that he might bring us to God. In his human body, he was put to death, but he was made alive in spirit. So now we are made alive in spirit because we can look at the cross and the cross is the same message in every language. It is a message. It doesn't matter what the world says the cross represents or what people have skewed it to mean. What it means is what the word says. It, it means he was crucified in the flesh, that Christ really actually died on the cross. He was a real person. It was a real event that really happened so that I and everyone who would believe would be reconciled to God. And that is the good news of the gospel. So thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. This is going to be the three sacrifices of Hebrews 13. And the first one is looking at the sacrifice of Jesus, that he made us something new. He restored us to fellowship and he separated us and he made us into something that we could never be on our own. You know, people say, oh, they're a good person, but without Christ, there is no such thing as a good person. Only the good God can allow us to be empowered us to be good, to be faithful, to be holy, to be righteous. It's only by the blood of Christ. It's only by the crucified Jesus Christ that he made a way for us and he brought us back into relationship with the Father. So thank you for tuning in. And God bless you. Just one word in season and my heart comes to life.